Eyes for Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for Taqwa, the wearing of Allah. And Tha is for Thawab, a reward. Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. Kha is for Khatem, the seal of the prophethood given to the prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qala Allah ta'ala Fas'alu ala al-dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun Qala Allah ta'ala La yastawi ladina ya'lamuna wal ladina la ya'lamun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ask those who know if you do not know He's also said can you compare those who know, but those who do not know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's edition of Fatwa to Jannah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We are still in this season discussing the girl child. Remember, empowering the girl child, mentoring the girl child is crucial to all we have to say. Inshallah, when I bring in my guest, we should continue the discussion on mentoring and empowerment of the female child. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You welcome back if you're just joining us. The program is still Pathway to Jenna, and I have in the studio with me Sister Mutiat Olagoki. She's the director, Egret Media Concepts, and she's also the convener, Muslima Speak Tribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Sometimes people tend to mix up women empowerment and feminism. What's the difference? Mixing it up. Well, yeah. Fatigue, I think that the, the problem started because the feminist drive was what got a lot of women across the West. And I'm particularly saying across the West because my grandmother is 96 years old and she's been working her whole life. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, she's felt empowered by some of the conversations she's had. She, for me, empowerment is having to take char charge of your life. And I've never met anyone, anyone that has charge of their life like my grandmother. And this was a woman that was 20 years old at the end of the Second World War. Wow. So you can imagine. And at that time, a lot of women across Europe, across the United States, can't even get a job mm. or don't have, are not as empowered as they are today. So feminism is, was a drive that came about supporting and protecting the rights of women, fighting for the rights of women there. Now, that's where the mix-up comes. So when you talk about let's empower women, there's a lot of, uh, I think, what's the word? Apathy mm. for it in our own culture, culture as, Muslims, yes. as Muslims, particularly as Muslims, because they look at history and that's synonym, synonymous uh, part of it. And they go, oh, it's you people are feminist. And once mm. you start to talk about let's get this, no, there's a difference. Empowering is giving somebody charge of their life. And that's what Islam is about. That's what, that's what Islam brought that the religion before the Prophet Islam so, so did like not have. So mm -hmm. they're not synonymous. It's just the way history is being told that is mixing things up. As Muslim women, what if we have restriction, especially those that are married? What if we have restriction in a way? Uh, I think that in a great sense, unfortunately, Given the rules of, no, unfortunately, the rules of Islam is not the unfortunate part. It's the unfortunate part is that it puts power to some people to make decisions for us for reasons that we have accepted because that's our values. However, if you're unfortunate to find someone who's not uh, considerate of your need, because this is a need for some of us. It's not just about, oh, I have to have my money. For people, it's not about how much is in the account. It's also about the difference you're able to make because you are economically empowered and the difference you make to the world and the society at large. So if you are unfortunate to have people who restrict you, it is really unfortunate. But given that, sometimes the restriction doesn't come because the person doesn't want good for you. It usually comes due to misunderstanding and protection. I think a great deal of it also comes from wanting to protect us from, you know, the world we live in and some of the challenges that it brings to us as Muslim, Muslims in hijab, in just keeping us safe. So, so if you are able to sit down with this husband or your father to come with, to understand their position 
and bring your position, I'm sure you'll be able to find a middle ground that allows you to make choices that are best for you Islamically, best for your health, for your life, and also good for just make you feel empowered. Empowered. Now, you, you mentioned that you should, it's not about having so much in the account. It's about the difference you can make. Yeah. So, making the difference, you know, we have this... Um, notion among some men. I'm not try, just trying to focus on men, really, because I'm looking at the woman. As a as a daughter, you have your father to regulate certain things. Mm. As someone's wife, you have your husband to regulate certain things for you. As a woman, okay, it's not about the money here. Let's say the man feels maybe the man feels insecure that oh, if she makes so much money, I wouldn't be able to control her any longer. Okay, let's not think about that. But looking at the difference you actually want to make. And you are, let's say you are restricted, you don't move. What are the things that we could do as women to actually achieve those things in this time that we have? Oh. The difference you want to make. The very first thing is the understanding of self. I mean, the understanding of self is the beginning of wisdom. It's a very popular saying. Understand yourself. Then your situations. Because a lot of times we spoil things. Like most people just come, oh, can you take that? And then you end up spoiling things that you shouldn't spoil. You yeah. need to start by understanding yourself. Here's the truth. Not everybody can juggle family life, being, being all the many things we have to be as women. Not many of us can juggle it with, uh, with having a job or showing up for other people in the society. And that's a truth that you must first accept. You need to ask yourself, can I do this? There are women that can't even juggle having a toddler and doing house chores. Mm. And it's not because they are lazy or anything. I mean, life throws out. different things at us. Mm. So you need to start by understanding yourself. The challenge that you have that is mm. holding you back from such empowerment and really understanding the situation. Sometimes you may find a difficult husband or father may, like I said earlier, may mm. actually be making the choice, not because they don't want you to have more money than them, but because they're trying to protect something. A lot of times you find most men saying they want to protect the family front. Mm. So they know that once you're out there, something will suffer. So, yes, yes. And this is what I tell the women that I work with. As women, we're juggling so many balls. Mm. Some of those balls are glass balls, mm. and some of them are rubber. You can throw them anywhere. You need to measure which ones are the glass balls that you can lose. And you need to prove to those people who are concerned or are restricting you that don't worry, I recognize that this is a glass ball. And the choice I have made, the economic choice I've made, will actually, has taken into consideration those balls, and I will do everything to protect them. Mm. I think that's a great way to start. Analyze your situation and yourself. Yeah, we're going to move now. We're going to start talking about mentoring. Oh, a lot of people, now we are getting the right perspective. Oh, this is actually what empowerment is. It's not the same thing as feminism. Mm. Okay, good. We are going to now move to mentoring. A lot of people need to know more about how to go about certain things. But we're going to take a short break to return to our discussion. Mm. Let's take a short break. We'll continue our discussion on mentoring and empowerment of, the, of Muslim women. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You welcome back. The program is still part with Tijana, and I still have in the studio with me, Sister Mutia Olagoke, discussing with us mentoring and empowerment for Muslim women. Well, we're trying to show the difference between mm -hmm. feminism and, and empowerment. empowerment. We should be empowered. We should work towards that. Doing that, we care. Yeah. Now, uh, mentoring. A lot of people need to be guided. Mm. I think that's what mentoring is. That am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, mentoring is having someone show you, basically show you the way. They mm. say, oh, no, 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 no. Mm. So having someone to show you the way and help you find your own way. Because okay. sometimes their way may not necessarily be, be your, your way. way. But okay. if they can show you the way to start, you can find your way. Okay. That's ask those who know if you do not know. Yeah. Okay, that's simply what it means. All right. Is this necessary in all spheres of human endeavor? Yes. The, the human society, or could we say the higher animal society, is pass on values and attributes and habits through mentoring. I mean, how did we become like this? We subconsciously were mentored by our own parents. 
like people will say there's no school of marriage but how yeah. do we know how to do marriage because we mm, are not following own. the path the of pattern. someone and you know how they say children don't learn by what you say yeah, they, learn by they learn by what you, what you do say. so whether you uh know it consciously or not you are mentoring the child to the 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 the, the, the old raising a child is more like what mentoring is of course the way mentoring is now with me having a mentor and somebody at work mentoring it's more structured or would we say we're more mindful of it however from the home from the day you're born you as a parent uh, literally become a mentor Mentor to that child all right um how important is this to women to women Muslim women in particular. Muslim women in particular. At, on a scale of what? <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of 10, 10, 10. Hmm. 10, 10. Particularly given how social media has taken over everything. Hmm. And there are so many, so many coaches, so many ideas, so many opinions, so many ways to do one thing. Hmm. So there's a need for us to truly be rooted in if we must be rooted in the values that matter to us or that will truly take us to to whatever level we want to go we do need mentoring and we as older people we do have to pay attention to the younger ones and show them the way because the way i see it all of us are figuring life out Mm. at the same time and things keep evolving so you really need to know how to navigate exactly now um i want to get a mentor Mm. How do I get a reliable mentor? And the first thing, and I keep saying this, is to understand yourself. Mm. Just because Muti does it and she's doing it well doesn't necessarily mean that I'm ideal for you. Everybody in your niche or in your industry or at work who's above you will not necessarily be ideal for you. So the first thing is understanding yourself. And then the next one is to understand the goal you want to achieve. I'm not your father, so you can't just tell me to come and adopt you randomly and be showing you the way. You Mm. must first know, why why do I need this mentor? I, for one, have more than three mentors, and everybody serves different purpose. So there's a mentor in broadcasting, there's a mentor in writing, there's a mentor. There are mentors that it's distance. I'm looking at them from afar. I'm watching them. They watch me. I watch them. Well, WhatsApp status and checking. This is what my guy is doing. When information right. comes, they throw it. So you need to understand you as a person who aligns with you. There are people who are doing well in my industry that I'm not going to, even if they pay me to be their mentee, I will not collect it. Hmm. Because our values don't align. And I found myself in rooms where they chose me. Hmm. And after a while, I'm like, okay. I can go on. This this can work for me. So it's the same thing. Even if a mentee chooses me, after a while I look at it and say, I don't operate like this. And it won't work. Somebody who's not ready to show up, somebody who's not ready to get things done Done. cannot be my mentee. So you need to know yourself and your goal because there are too many people that can do too many things and time is not enough for you to find one person and say they're the one that will help you, your mentor in marriage, your mentor in So that means for each each part that one has identified you need to get a mentor yes is it possible to is it possible to just evolve on one's own we is, is without it possible having, without having mentor without having anyone to mm, look after anyone mm, yeah. or having someone to guide you not yes. even your mom i mean no let's look at okay you're going i'm going into broadcasting it's a, lot money, money. it's a lot easier yes i'm sure it is I mean, some people are very starkly independent. Yeah. However, we are a people that make mistakes. And it is a lot easier to have a mentor who already have made some of some those mistakes. mistakes. Okay. It's already, it's easier to have somebody to guide you to say, ah, I don't think this will work. It's easier. If you've been in a support group, like a business support group, I run a business support group, and I can see how much we are able to to achieve supporting each other saying i've done this before it works try this yes. rather than so you just know you can just say oh let me um 
take another. One of the popular things you hear is that if your mentor has been doing something for 20 years, the moment they take, you know, they hold your hand, there's a great chance that you're buying 20 years. 20 years of 20 experience. 20 years of experience. And they can tell you, so you can start from, you are going to make your own mistakes and create, chat your own way and your own experiences. But there are things you won't do. Is it possible to have institutionalized mentorship programs? Not me searching, I want to Mr. Mutia. Today I'm looking for Dr. This. Institutionalized mentorship, is it possible to have that? It is possible and it is available. Okay. I took the Cherry Blair uh, mentorship. I applied for the Cherry Blair mentorship, uh, for Cherry Blair Foundation mentorship, and it was amazing through the Muitala Mohammed Foundation, and they got a okay. uh, partnership with Cherry, uh, Cherry Blair Foundation abroad, mm -hmm. and this amazing one-year uh, mentorship that connected women from third world country with big corporate Buddy. people across Europe and America, and mm. it was amazing. I got somebody from Sony, and it was amazing. We mm. brought credit from so yes, I currently sit on the board of the Muslim Mentorship Connect, where okay. we connect mentors and mentees together. Right. We, it is not just possible; it is needed, because you know what they say: if you don't know someone, how do you go and meet them? Go to a platform like that is not there. Mm. So yes, it is needed and it is available, and you can find it on LinkedIn. You can find it. I think LinkedIn is a place, a good place to start, start. if you're looking. Just put the keyword mentorship um, and then a lot and of you, or just or even Google mentorship okay. program and it will give you a lot of platforms that you can apply. All right, Jazak um, So much. I know there's still so much to learn, but we have actually learned a lot. <laughs> and as a parent, that. you should mentor the way your parents did the other time. Yes. Yes. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Jazak Allah Khairan for sharing with us from your wealth of knowledge. May Allah continue increasing knowledge and understanding of the deen. Amen. May it be preserved on those paths. Amen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It has been Sister Mutia Olagoke discussing with us mentoring and empowerment for Muslim women. Inshallah, we're going to move to the other segment. Stay tuned. The Island Muslim Coalition Strategy Retreat is the coming together of several Ummas on the island to brainstorm on how they can achieve and provide solutions to what the Muslim Umma and community are lacking. How did the idea about the coalition strategy come about? As the name suggests, Island Muslim Coalition, this is intended as a coalition of Muslims along the Leki, Ikoyi, Ibejuleki axis. Uh, potentially all the way to a prayer to come together to try and work on common needs that we may be able to achieve working together rather than working individually as Muslims we need to come together to work for uh, you know big projects for the Ummah if you are doing it individually you may not be able to achieve more but when we come together as communities on this axis, we believe there are so many things we'll be able to achieve together, inshallah. It's a belated uh, idea which should have been carried out many years ago. I feel uh, nothing is too late. It's something that is needed. This is um, a culmination of some ideas we started um, uh, when people were concerned about uh, the issue of uh, Muslim symmetry you know because um, we've seen that um, the symmetries that we have in Lagos at least in Lagos state the Muslim symmetries are not well looked after they are not well maintained and uh, there's also a, a dearth of Muslim symmetries you have very few you don't have enough to serve especially this uh, lucky to a bear axis we don't have Muslim symmetry so there's a need for us to have symmetries for our people because Islam prescribes how we should respect and how we treat the dead. So we need to have that. So, and that was what brought this idea together. And as people started talking about it, we found that there are other people who are like-minded in the axis. And of course, this idea started having traction. And then from there, the other ideas developed. Idea of orphanage, idea of this. So then there was a need to actually sit down and harness and put our thoughts together and get everybody so that we can have a good coalition that can drive the whole process and develop a roadmap to be able to actualize all those things that we have been discussed.
During the lecture, questions were thrown and they were answered respectively. After that, he asked everyone to form several groups where he gave each group a topic to discuss and presents with the purpose of adopting several strategy approach on how they can be implemented. Coming to the end of the lecture, we heard from more of the attendees. So far, what are the takeaways from this section? We want people to believe in us. We want the buy-in of leaders who are here to see that we can actually do it, to be motivated to support us further. And also, after the strategic session, we want to be better informed and better guided about how we are going to pursue this mission, inshallah, and want to have a roadmap and a workable blueprint for the progress and success of this uh, endeavor and mission, inshallah. I expect that um, we would have a 10 years view into how we intend to chat and deliver on the objectives of IMC. For me, major takeaway is um, we need to have sincerity of purpose. There are a lot of Islamic organizations out there, so we don't want this to be just another Islamic organization. You can see this is a coalition of a lot of mosques around this area. So we have a lot of knowledgeable people around. We have a lot of people who know a lot about Islam, who know what they are doing. They've all come together to do this. So I really expect that this is going to be very different from all the other organizations we've had in the past. We've talked about the issue of funding because there's really no way you can impact successfully if you're not able to fund all your projects. And we've discussed that extensively about um, sourcing for funds locally and internationally. And of course, there's also the issue of levying members. The project will succeed, inshallah. Uh, we'll do all our best to ensure that this project succeeds. And at the, at the end of the day, the outcome of it should be victory for all Muslims and for humanity at large. Yeah, well, the takeaway majorly has shown um, a lot of collaborations that needed to be done to move the society forward. Um, it's collaboration in the area of uh, providing befitting um, centers for the Ummah, which range from schools to orphanage to um, Makabir that will better the interest of the Muslim community moving forward. How do you think most of these things discussed can be implemented? Well, um, we are still at um, conception stage. And what that means is that we are cooking the soup. When we get to the stage where we are finished cooking, then we can begin to talk of implementation. Um, part of the strategy session we are is still discussing how we are going to implement all these lofty ideas. But like I said in the session, we have in this gathering a lot of uh, chief executive, business executive, and entrepreneurs who are running businesses. So it's not going to be a problem. All we need to do is put in place a good strategy. That's number one. Have people who will actualize those our dreams by making sure that they become reality and setting milestones, milestones as to what is to be achieved over a period of time and also putting in place measurement to measure the performance. And I have no doubt in my mind that inshallah, Allah will not disappoint us, we will surely make it a reality in our lifetime. We have a lot of heads here, so I really don't think it should be that much of a problem to implement. If everybody can come together, cooperate fully and then everybody buys into what has been talked about here. The implementation, I mean, it's essential for us to come up with an implementation plan and all of us have alignment around those implementation plan, uh, buy into it and have a structure to monitor the implementation. We need management structure around that plan so that how the plan is being rolled out, how it's been implemented, can also be monitored, measured. Um, and, and essentially, um, we need to decide who is responsible for what. And it could actually be a small, small group of people who be responsible for uh, part, of the, uh, part of the program. But essentially, is to have the leadership, the, uh, the management uh, structure to be able to monitor the implementation and the progress uh, we make to have a regular review and where there is a need to tweak. Well, I think implementation is one thing that is very, very germane. 
And uh, one of the things I think is that uh, the group will break into strategic sessions, and those strategic sessions will come up with um, specifics on how to implement these ideas, which range from how to fund it, how to position it, how to put up the structures, and how to put up the necessary management that will guide it. We do hope that the purpose of this gathering will come about soon. You welcome back. The program is still part with Tijena. Earlier today, I had Sister Mutia Olagoke, the director of Igret Media Concept. She discussed women empowerment and mentorship. She said a lot. As parents, let's have it at the back of our minds that we should be the first mentors. Whatever we say, whatever we do, we are indirectly mentoring our children. Apart from doing that, there are times that we identify, uh, we are just certain things for our children. We create a niche for them and then try to get mentors for them. And as a mentor, you have certain qualities, ability to listen well, ability to manage your time. And as a, ment as a mentee, you need to listen, follow direction, and offer some things. What do you bring to the table? You should not just be, I want it, I want it. You should also give something. Inshallah, so we'll meet same time, same station. This time, next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Every second I live, every penny I give is just for you. Every breath I breathe, every trace I leave is just for you.